morning, people. Zard the Womp here, and welcome to episode 6 of the Grey Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Last time, we accused Minimeno of killing Jaziel Brett because he was out to the hut. He, there was a gap in the, in the reed wall that allowed him to stab a knife through it, and the judge is believing it because, basically, because Minimeno, he had a little freak out. He, he had pretty much admitted his guilt by basically just being all, No! And for once, the judge actually takes that into consideration. However, this is a Nasa Derny game. As such, an objection will probably be brought up. I will therefore move to conclude proceedings by delivering my fight for again. Do it. Ha! 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 Well, this is all very convenient. This is how the highest court in our mighty empire delivers justice, is it? Suppressing well-meaning citizens free to speak, free to speak, and branding them as criminals. But we've established that the victim was stabbed from outside that through the reed screen walls. And knowing but you was in, a, in place at the time to have his have his head on the hilt of the blade. It's a perfectly logical deduction. So your argument hinges on the location of whoever stabbed the Englishwoman, does it? Well, it seems a little irrelevant now. Irrelevant? Where, where she was stabbed, how she was stabbed, it doesn't matter. I mean, whether she was stabbed at all makes no difference if you think about it. After all, this trial's already shown the whole thing hinges on something else. What? What are you talking about? Brace yourselves, little man! I'm talking about the fact that everything's changed. Because of the dirt you dug up. What? Enough obscurity. Explain yourself, witness. What's to explain? I'm talking about the poison, of course. The uh, poison? Let's ask the professor for a comment on the situation, shall we? I understand a deadly poison you were developing was stolen from your laboratory, correct? And it's been shown that this poison was, ad was administered to the victim, Miss Brett, is that right? That is correct. The unusual con constriction of the victim's pupils are a sure sign that this particular poison was, was used. I see, I see. So, presumably that means that, vi that the victim already had the poison in her body before she was stabbed. Ah! Given that her pupils were clearly constricted, it seems highly likely, yes. If she had been dental ray, the poison could not have circulated in her blood. Kish ha ha! Ah, how refreshing to hear the argument of a metropolitan mind! Precisely, it matters not a jot who sat whom in whose back and with whose blade! Because, quite simply, the English woman's life was taken down by a knife, but by the poison! Objection. But that can be explained by the poison being on the blade, and oh, it's Objection. already... <laughs> We're gotten already, have we, yokel? During these very proceedings, the laboratory of the professor at your side assisted the proving... The po wait. Wait, can I see just what that was? Assist in proving that the blade of the weapon used to attack the victim had no trace of poison on it whatsoever! Ah! So let me get this down. The facts, as skillfully established by the defense in this trial, turn out to be headline making red herring. I applaud you, but that is besides the point. Is that about right? Uh, um, well. Order, order, order! But where does this leave us? How, in that case, did the poison enter the victim's body? There is an undeniably obvious answer to that. The lady most likely inv invited it. You mean she drank it? Have a look at this photograph here. As you can see, a bottle of carbonate water and a glass had been knocked onto the sandy floor of the beach hut. She had killed. She had. She had hung herself by her own petard. The poison could have been slipped into either. So somebody made Miss Brett drink it. And then it's revealed that Hosanaga was behind it all. That's right. 
I was the one who poisoned her spot carbonated water. I gave her a taste of her own medicine. Better, was it? Better, was it not? I knew that she would... I had punished her for breaking that bottle of carbonated water that I protected for so long by poisoning her own. Irony. Delicious irony. Well, what do you know? Look at those dashing eyes. This will make a great front page shot. Hey, why the bewitching stare? After all, I'm the last person you should be looking at. It would make no sense at all that I poisoned the woman, would it? I mean, that's an already established. Hold it. Established? What are you talking about? Huh? You don't tell me you've forgotten. That, uh, that's a little hard to believe, given that the person who established it was you! Me? What earth does he mean? Oh, let me capture those wide eyes. This is prime breast fodder, this is. It would seem that this trial is not doesn't end yet after all. I hear my call upon the witness to give further testimony. That's right, this is. Let me get a shot of that magnificent beard, your excellency. You can claim it to be impossible that you were the one responsible for administering the poison to the victim. You will explain to the court in your testimony to the basis on well on which you make such a claim. I'm a journal when I'm a man. I've never tried to run or hide anything from anything in my life. Except big except big spiders, because they're scary. And one charged me last week. And I'm not about to start now, because that's minimalism. For a brief moment, I thought I illuminated the truth, but it slipped right through the obs right back into obscurity again. It's just, it's just where is this trial going to take us? Oh yes, I said the English woman. That's the very fact that, and that's it's that very fact that proves I'm innocent. Because why would I bother to stab the woman if she, I'd already poisoned her? When I heard the student girl and that pompous English murderer arguing, it got my goat. In the, if the courts weren't going to punish Brett for what she did, someone else would have to see justice done. So, you admit it then, that everything happened as I described, and Zarthwamp has to cough. <coughs> That you are the one who's had Miss Brent the back to the reed screen. You can't blame this miserable country of ours. A country that bows the pressures of foreign powers and lets murderers walk free. What kind of future can a country like that have? Well, that's why I did it. I did what our pathetic leaders didn't have the guts to do. Slap, slap bang in the middle of that charming lady's back. I plunged the blade of sweet justice right in there. As someone who spends his life seeing that the truth is told, I feel really, really awful about giving false information in my testimony before. But as it turns out, there was somebody else who had it in for the victim and got her before me. That's right, you guessed it. That pretty little student girl. Now there's a woman after my own heart. You're implicating Reagan? She's the one who gave the poison to the English woman and ended her pitiful existence. And suddenly, snap! This journal here is off the book. Hmm, that argument is sound, certainly. If that, if the witness had administered the poison herself, he only needs to have waited for it to take effect. Subsequently, stabbing the victim in the back would have been entirely nonsensical. And therefore, this report had nothing to do with the poisoning. Yes, it's all quite logical. Well, that's right, it is logical and true. I'm glad y'all seen the light. Just as it last. This is unbelievable. And after I'd made so much progress in proving his guilt, is he really gonna get away with it now? Think of Kazuma-san and Naruto-san. They never stopped looking for a way forward until the judge's final gavel. Very well, the counsel. Proceed with what I assume to be your final cross-examination this trial. Yes, Your Excellency. Cross-examination time. To bleed innocence. Okay. 
stab the woman if she if he had already poisoned her. Okay. Yes. Let's press this one first. Hold it. What exactly were they arguing about? About what happened in that restaurant nine months ago. That's what. The student girl was laying in the way for killing her beloved mentor, Dr. Wilson. Yes, John H. Wilson, a professor of medicine invited here from England by Professor Mika Toba, no less. Right, but the English woman just here. Her case was heard by the British consul at court in Shanghai, however. There is little doubt that she would simply have been acquitted and sent back to her homeland a free woman. It was eating that soon girl up inside. You could see it. I really felt for her. I, I can't. I can't stand here and listen to this tribe. Ray! Young, young girl, you said accused here. You can't just blur out whatever you feel like. No, you can't. Sorry, but I'm in the middle of some very important testimony here. Just keep quiet and listen. But, but this awful man is making up all this up. Susano, please, you have to make them listen. You have to throw them. Throw a rock at them. Return to the dock at once, Mamambi san. We are in the middle of a cross examination. Hold it. Your Excellency, please, I implore you. That journalist is clearly not a trustworthy witness. Exactly. He's a filthy, rotten, black-hearted, bigoted, dirty, great peeping Tom. Whoa, whoa, take it easy there. Now, I may be rotten. I may be black-hearted. I may be dirt. I may be bigoted. I may be a peeping Tom, but I am not dirty. I will have you know that I pay at least four Please, I really think the court should hear what the defendant has to say. Your Excellency, I see no need whatsoever to entertain the accused remarks. I will grant the request of the defense. But, but, Your Excellency! This is likely to be the final cross examination of these proceedings. As such, I believe it would be ill advised to stifle the defendant's obvious concerns. So, with Faust recognizing that this contravenes regular protocol, I hereby call upon the defendant to speak. Oh. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Okay. Hold it! The stolen poison that killed the victim, you mean? I suspect her of being the one to steal it. I mean, just think about how she killed Dr. Wilson. That's true. Additionally, Miss Brett certainly had knowledge of the new poison. But surely it would have been no easy task to see all widely secret toxin being developed for the government. Indeed, all visitors to the laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by myself or a colleague, getting the poison out would be very difficult. That's true! I pressed Professor Mikatoma until he agreed to show me the poison when I visited his laboratory! But as I left, I was searched from top to tail! They took out a plastic, a, a plastic glove! A latex glove and searched me! Miss Brett rather bluntly revealed the existence of the toxin we'd been developing, you see. And since suzuki san expressed such an interest in it, I felt unable to refuse. He started crying. What was I supposed to do? Obviously, I gave nothing away, other than the fact that it was an extremely potent substance. I'm very ashamed of myself. It's just that I've had a singularly terrible experience with a deadly poison. I want to look at your lady in the eye. Surely you can understand that. To find out if my suspicions were true, I confronted Miss Brett about the poison. I told her that if there were to be an incident involving it somehow, it wouldn't just be the university. The military would be dragged into it. The whole government, even. It would be a complete disaster. And how did Miss Brett respond to your concerns? She just curled those beautiful lips of hers and said she didn't know the first thing about it. In English, actually. And, oh, uh, yes. Men and men, son. One small question, if you don't mind. I do mind. Can't you see I'm busy? I am, I am drawing nudie pics in this notebook. 
Clearly you were clearly you were outside the bench, but Beach Hut was in whilst the defendant and Miss Brett were conversing. Presumably then, it was you who stole this article about you who wrote this article about what you'd heard. Exclusive! Deadly poison stolen from Yumai Medical Research Laboratory. The story was published in this morning's edition of Suryu News. The details are too accurate for it to have been written by anyone else. Hmm, sorry, don't know what you're talking about. Yes, look at this. The entire article is almost what I said to Miss Brett, word for word. Ah! Well, Minamino-san? In my defense, I did not include all of her words. She included a lot of... She included a lot of strong language that would not have been suitable for the children. As a journal, and as a citizen of a free country, I don't have to reveal my sources. That's a founding principle of minimalism. Bob is clearly right about this. That reporter did write that article, and he based it on what he had overheard from Asset the Hut. The details of the poison article have been updated. So what's... So that's what it was all about. You were trying to cover up the fact that you were listening in. That's why you came up with that stinking story about me arguing with her. Sh Shut up! My stories never stink! Like, how can they? I bet, like I said, I bet four times a week. Look, whatever you say, little girl, it doesn't alter the facts. Your Excellency, there's something I want to say, and I want it to go on record. Very well, you may amend your formal testimony. Ha! 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 What are you doing? I am summoning a block of seagulls to take you down! Ha! 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 Hold it! But as you doubt the effect, the, eff the efficacy of the poison, so I have to make sure your victim would die. That's our song. What? That would be like pouring pepper on your Chinese ramen before you even tasted it. Completely reckless. Although, it might surprise you to learn that I am a bit of an impetuous pepper pourer as it happens. Once the victim had taken the poison, she would have been only minutes away from death. And yet, this man has then proceeded to stab her in the back as well. There has to be a good reason for that. If it was if it was the reporter who gave the poison Mr. Brett, then clearly, he must have done it prior to Ray entering the hut. Yes, that's undeniable. But between him leaving the hut and the victim being stabbed, there was one very crucial change in the situation. Sorry? What change? The reporter overheard the conversation between Ray and the English woman. Ah, yes, that's it! That's when Minamino first saw first found out the exact nature of the poison he'd used. That could be the key here. If the victim had been unwillingly taken to the po had already unwillingly taken the poison already, the reporter would have no need to stab her. On the face of it, the logic sounds entirely reasonable. But there's no question that this man was responsible for Miss Brett's murder. If we could think of a plausible explanation as to why he might have stabbed her even after the poisoning, I feel that everything would drop into place. That's what we should be looking for. Yes, I agree, and in order to do that, I must try to glean more information. Okay, let's go. Yes. Okay. Okay, the swamp's mouth into the... would be brutal Bay of minutes. Okay. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay. I'm just looking around. Okay, let me see. Okay, no reason to stab the poison versus well. Okay, let's see if we can present the poison article. Objection! Yeah, okay, there we go. Well, I can think of one reason. What? What? But before I explain, I'd like you to confirm something for the court. Did you glean all the information for this newspaper article from what you overheard outside the hut? Of course he 
needed! There can be no question of that! After all, when we were on the laboratory together, all we were told was that it's a terrible toxin! And there was more and more important fact to consider. According to the witness, Mamabi-san's verbal attack against the victim began as soon as she entered the hut. In other words, it would have been impossible for her to have slipped the poison into Miss Brett's drink. Attention! Where are you going on? Where are you, where are you going with this council? Minamino-san has made it quite clear that he observed every single thing that had happened in the beach hut. If the defender had somehow found an opportunity, this man would have seen it. Ah! Which means that Miss Brett couldn't have imbibed the poison whilst the defendant was present. In fact, it must have been administered to her before my mommy signed into the hut. Yes, very articulately put. When I walked into the hut, I immediately started to press Miss Brett about the poison. At which point, Minomeno san overheard some worrying information. Worrying information? What worrying information? The information which she subs subsequently included in his newspaper article, namely, that the poison was being developed in strict secrecy, and that it couldn't be readily attained. Absolutely. In fact, that's question. That's quite an understatement. The only possible place it could uh, it could come from is my lab. And furthermore, anyone afflicted by the poison would be exhibit telltale signs in death. The extreme constriction of the pupils. Yes, it's quite stark when you see it. There are other poisons that show similar symptoms, but not among new substances that are undetectable. In other words, it would be clear that the victim's life had been ended by the use of this particular poison, which would reduce the number of suspects to only a handful of people. Oh! Everyone in my laboratory is aware of the unique properties of the toxin we've been developing. None of them would be foolish enough to attempt to use it for some nefarious deed. My mommy saw me no exception. Therefore, we can conclude that whoever administered this unique poison to the victim was a lay person unaware of its telltale properties. In other words, someone like you, Rayton Minamino. Sorry, I was looking over my I was glancing over my clock when basically he re reacted. It was you who stole the poison from the laboratory that day. And it was you who administered it to the unwinged victim. But you quickly realized that it was a terrible mistake. Because the poison caused such unusual symptoms and was so traceable. As you listened in from the far side of the beach hut's thin walls, you learned of these facts. But you'd already given the victim the poison at that point. It was too late. So you hatched a plan to disguise your mistake. A plan that involved stabbing the victim in the back to the read screen. But, but what good could that possibly do? Is it obvious, Council? The plan was to kill Miss Brett before the poison could take effect. Once in the blood, the poison causes the onset of pupil constriction. But he had hoped to pre precipitate the victim's death before that happened. Handy. Exactly. Because without any revealing signs of the new secret poison's use, no one would ever have suspected. This is extraordinary. Yes, the effects of the poison meant it would be too easily identified, so the killer had to mask its use. That, or basically, it could also be justified that by stabbing Brett, by, that by stabbing Brett, basically, it would give him an alibi that he couldn't be blamed for the poisoning. Which is, which he attempted to do by plunging a knife into the middle of the victim's back. Arr, arr. Order, order, order! The argument presented is sound. The court was satisfied by that war's consideration. Does the prosecution have a counter-argument in which is to put forward? Well, um, there are a number of, I mean, yes, a counter completely. Objection. The prosecution's evasive response clearly shows that, that in much the same way he, as he nurtures the remnants of his top knot, he's clinging to lost hope. Lost hope! Screw you, hot! 
Ah, you pathetic, useless fallen samurai. Fallen? What are you calling fallen? My burgeoning growth? I don't need your damn growth. I don't need a counter-argument. What? What are you talking about? It should be blatantly obvious. I stole the poison, you say? G gave it to the victim, you say? Stabbed her, you say? Lots of fine theories. But I don't need a counter-argument because you don't have an argument yourself. Where's your evidence? Yes, you make it all sound so plausible, don't ya? But without evidence, it means nothing! Where the I, I base my news on the facts, and whenever I hear on the street, that just sounds entertaining! Fox, what do you mean? Explain yourself. I mean, what the professor said earlier in the trial. It's all here, in my many memo memos, every word, every slip of the tongue, all noted. That's what the Shoya New Joyu News is famous for. It's the power of the pretty word. But surely it would be no easy task to steal a highly secret toxin be developed from the government. Indeed, all visitors to my laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by myself or a colleague, getting the poison out would be very difficult. How's that then? Blow the story wide open. See, I Raiden Minimano, a mirror mortar from the show you news, couldn't possibly have sold that poison from the Remissor's laboratory. Ah! But there can't be any question of it. He must have sold the poison that day. He stole it and used it to kill. And if that's the case, as you have identified, the poison itself is definitely evidence we need. Because whoever stole it from the laboratory that day, the true is the true culprit here. What's your point, you annoyingly handsome country bumpkin? My point here is this. There is no way that you, Minamino-san, could have stolen the poison that day. I have not earned a verbal conjecture now, thank you. What the court must show is evidence. What proof do you have that this witness stole the poison on the day in question? Take that! The pen! The proof, Your Excellency, is this fountain pen. Ah! A fountain pen? How could that possibly be relevant? What is that in the next episode? Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back with the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do as they want. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye!